I'm Michelle with Corner Curve Quilts. Thank you for joining me today as I go over clue four of the Psy Star Mystery Quilt Along unit. This unit is the Drunkard's Path or fourth of a circle and I'm going to show you how I'm doing it in two different videos this time. The first one being with the template, the second one being the reusable no tear freezer paper uh, template. So starting with my template, I'm going to uh, cut and I have several squares laid out here and I'm going to put my other safety glove on. Now because I'm not cutting with a ruler, I have to be very careful when I am cutting with my rotary cutter and I used my rotary cutter and a regular ruler for cutting the squares that are listed in the pattern. And now I'm gonna line it up and trim this part away. And we'll use the part uh, B here and the yellow quarter circle. And I'm just gonna trim nice and slow and work my way on around and just like so. Now I have a few, few quarter circles cut. I'm going to set those over to the side. And then I'm going to take my square. Again, I'm going to line a few of them up so I can cut several at a time. And go ahead and trim away the circle. Concentrate here and also I want to be very careful because I do not want to slip and I've trimmed that away. Now there's a lot of fabric left in this. Um, you can create half square triangles with that if you want by drawing a line from the corner to corner and layering two of them together and sewing those together. Um, that's a way of reusing those little scraps or put them in the applique bin and um, be able to create more squares for another project. The piece we want to use, and since I'm done cutting, I'm going to go ahead and remove my gloves and I'm going to take and fold this. We want to find the center of that circle. I'm going to just um, finger press it so we have that marked. And then we want to take one of our circles and we're going to fold that and find the center of the circle. With that finger pressing, we're going to line that right up like so. Now, the center needs to be lined up, but also these points need to be going in the same direction and not, because um, I could have it lined up, they're matching right there, but my points are not going in the same direction. So let's go ahead and spin that around so the points are going in the same direction and I'm lined up in the center. Now I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to pin from the red side. And we're going to pin right there in the center and then we're going to fold this back and we are going to go ahead and line that straight edge up on this side and pin that and then we're going to go ahead and do the same on the other side. And I like to pin these like while watching TV. It gives me, i always doing something when I'm watching TV. So, but I can sit there and make a big pile of these little cones and while I'm at it. I'm going to go ahead and do another one um, so I can show you. I'm going to chain piece these. Again, line it up, find the center, and take one of my yellow and line those up, find the center, 
put right sides together. Maybe it opens up. Make sure the point's going in the same direction. And flip that over, go ahead and pin it. And again, fold it on over and line those straight edges up. Pin. And again, now when we go to sew these, we're gonna sew with the red on the top. So the concave circle is at the top because there's more more fabric there, and we can ease that in around the circle much easier and uh, work on that. The nice thing about it being on the curve that is on the bias, and so that um, will allow us to stretch and um, ease that in and work it. So we're gonna go to the, the sewing machine and we will Hopefully get this right up in here so you can see. And oh, I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna put my needle down. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my pen out. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch. Now I'm gonna just stitch a couple, couple stitches, and then I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop. Work my way around nice and slowly. And we're gonna sew to the center. Now I prepped a couple of them because I'm gonna show you how I'm going to chain stitch these. When I get to the center, I'm gonna remove my pin, then I'm gonna lift my needle, I'm gonna lift my presser foot and spin that to the back and put my presser foot back down. Then I'm going to go on to my next one and wind up. I'm going to put my needle back down, lift my presser foot up, slide the fabric underneath. I'm going to take just a stitch or two and pull my pin out and go ahead and continue stitching to the center. Now, I could go ahead and sew it all the way around. However, I have found when I do that, the opposite end will not be nice and even, and it's harder to work that in. And I'm trying to avoid getting a little pleat there. You can tell that I'm going nice and slow. And when we get up to the other pin here, I'm going to pull the pin out. And I'm going to... This time, go ahead and cut instead of just lifting and pulling it to the back. But I've done several of them at a time, creating a great big long chain. And then I come around to the, this side. I will trim, separate these. I got one of the th strings. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and... So this time I'm going to still keep my concave circle on top which means I need to line up on the left side of my presser foot. And pull my pin, I'm gonna hold my string, I'm gonna stitch a couple, and you can tell that there's a little pleat right there. And I'm gonna lift my foot, line my fabric edges up again, and keep going. And it is kind of slow, but if you do a few each each day, you'll be surprised at how quickly you can get them done. And you can tell you just sometimes have to manipulate that fabric, work it around so that you don't get a pleat. If you get a pleat, just take out about four or five stitches and work it back in. I'm going to go ahead and back stitch just a couple times and then... I'm going to lift my presser foot up, slide that to the back, and I can chain piece this next one again. And you can create a pretty good chain doing that. And I'm just going to do a stitch. And 
carefully. I'm keeping my hand out of the way so you can see. Recorded this once and all you could see was my big fat hand. It took up the whole screen and you couldn't see where, how I was manipulating and working that. So I got my stiletto this time. Hopefully you can see again, back stitch a stitch or two. And now that I'm done with those, I'm gonna go ahead and cut and pull those out and cut them apart. And then you wanna go ahead and press the seam open. And that should be fairly easy to do. Get it to, to open up, go both directions, and that should give you a nice flat seam like that. That'll make it easier when we're sewing the units together. And that's all for method one. So until next time, let's go sew.